You know what? I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. But, you know, um, what I will tell you is a lot of you guys did not, maybe did not know the spiritual side of my brother. And he had a spiritual heart. And a lot of the things that I have to say, what I'm going to tell you is, is I'm going to say them in a prayer. And I would hope that everybody in here would join me and just bow your heads. But I want to share something with you just before I do that. That just before this, when I walked up, music brings friends together and makes friends of strangers. I met a stranger here tonight, and he shared that quote with me. He knows he's in the crowd. And I just want to thank you for sharing that quote with me. I don't know if it was yours or somewhere you got it someplace else, but it really touched my heart thinking about how music and these guys on this stage and everybody in this room, what it does for us. So it's a wonderful quote, but if you guys would, I'm going to ask you guys just to, to bow your head in a, in a word of prayer. And I, I thought I could get through this, but I had to finally write it out today. So please join me. Father, we gather in this venue tonight to celebrate life. Not only the life of Walter Stephen Pryor, but the lives of all of us. Our friends, our family, those who we love and those who we cherish. Through music, we will reflect upon the life of Steve Pryor. My brother, a Tulsa musician who gave his life to playing music. He was an inspiration, an encourager to other musicians to follow their dreams so that they, too, could play their music for others, for the masses, share their talent with others. Steve was a giver of his time and of his talent. Admittedly, on occasion, just like all of us, he was a pain in the ass. <laughs> but I want you to know that he, he loved, he truly loved his beloved Tulsa. The people, the musicians, the character of this city, the talent that it bestowed, and Father, he wanted nothing more than all of us to share in opportunities just like this, to share music, to share friendship. He was something else. <laughs> he enjoyed the history, and he really genuinely loved everyone of all walks of life. We ask, Father, that tonight's music provide comfort through its many healing properties. Music, a gift to our hearts, Father, that you gave to us. I pray, Father, that the talent that is in this room tonight would be poured out. And, Father, that they would be enriched by your blessings. But, Father, I also pray that the music that they play, both tonight and going forward, would would enrich the lives of us, the listener, the crowd, the audience. Father, thank you for everyone here tonight to commemorate Steve's legacy and for the musicians here to play on the behalf. Watch over us tonight, Father. Provide clarity for our own purpose in life. And may we seek to know you better. Father, may we seek to know you better. And I pray, Father, that you would seek us. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Now, there is some rich, rich talent in this room tonight. And we're going to continue to celebrate. And I tell you, there, every time I saw my brother, and I, you know, admittedly, I didn't get to see my brother enough, but what I would tell you is, is every time I saw my brother, he would hug me, he would hug my daughter, my wife, and my son, but he would look at me and he'd say, Scotty, I'm proud of you. 
And I want you to know tonight, and I'd like you guys to raise a toast, that brother, I'm proud of you. And let's celebrate! You can feel it now, can't you? I mean, do, do you feel it? I mean, like, I've got goosebumps on my knees right now, and I know that's when something's happening. But raise your hand, jingle your glass, scream out loud. Can you feel the love and the ghosts in this room tonight? Man, this is a powerful joint. Uh, he's published 22 books. That's impressive to me. He is a music historian. He is a legend in his own right. He's got a few things to say about Steve. Please welcome John Woolley to the stage. Thank you all very much. Got a couple of tough acts to follow here. I gotta tell you, the first time I ever talked to Steve for publication was a little over 28 years ago. I did a column called the Tulsa Sound at that time. And by that time, Steve and the mighty King Snakes, Pat and John, were a well-established area band. They were playing like 300 gigs a year and they were recording a new album for Explosive Records. A month after my story ran, they opened for B.B. King at the Brady Theater. Now, although Steve was only in his early 30s then, this was 1988, he was already a veteran player who'd worked on both coasts. In fact, he put together the Mighty King Stakes after returning from a standing gig with the famed blues man Paul Butterfield in New York. Now this was the first story I ever wrote about Steve. And Steve, in that story, talked about some of his own firsts. The first time he said he heard a great electric blues performance was when he was in junior high school. And he went to Euler Park and saw Freddie King. Yeah. Been brought in by Leon Russell and Steve told me, Freddie King was out there in this hideous Porter Wagner suit. These long sideburns. And he was just a killer. Well, it was not long afterwards that Steve scored another first. His first time on a Tulsa stage. Remember when that was? That was at the Colony Club. He was 15 years old. He was in there with a fake ID and he was listening to the Jazz Babies, which was Mike, Bruce, Cockrell, Ryan, Carl Rayla, Jamie Oldacre. Yeah. When Mike asked if anyone wanted to come up and jam, Steve took the stage for the first time ever in Tulsa and played Elmore James' Statesboro Blues. Well, Jimmy Strader was with Steve then, and Steve said, you know, that bass player looks a lot like the guy in Derek of the Dominoes. And Strader says, well, it is. And Steve told me that was really inspirational. That was when I found out you could be from Tulsa and you could make it. Well, Steve was from Tulsa and he did make it. Maybe quicker than he thought. A couple years after my interview ran, the Steve Pryor Band had a major label deal, rave national reviews, and gigs across the country, often with the fabulous Thunderbirds. I've always liked the way that his label, Zoo Entertainment, described Steve and the boys. They said, Blues rock from the American heartland. Vintage instruments, emotion, virtuosity, Maximum power. That pretty well covered. Even after Steve had left the label and come back home and put the Mighty King Snakes back together. You know, like most of us here, I was always pulling for Steve. Not only was he a major talent, but he had a very good heart. Like all of us, he had his darkness to fight and sometimes he lost. But he was always in there pitching and he gave us his best a lot of times where we didn't even deserve it. I remember talking to some of the guys at KOM, KMOD. You remember when they were putting out those albums in the 80s? They just released one of them about with Tulsa Rock and Roll. 
and they were playing cuts for me. And before they played Steve's cut, they said, you know, Steve was out here at the Rainbow Expo, and he played this song with not more than a half a dozen people in the audience. Then, uh -oh, those guys dropped the needle. And out of the speakers came some of the most blistering licks I've ever heard. Some of the most impressive work I'd ever heard Steve do, and he did it in front of half a dozen folks. Now, it's been noted elsewhere that Steve was a link between the classic Tulsa sound, guys like Mike Bruce and Dave Teagarden and Jamie Oldacre, and the up-and-comers from the 80s. Many of those up-and-comers, like Steve, you can find on the Explosive Sampler album from the middle of the 80s. Anybody got the Explosive Sampler album out there? Is there, what? Yeah, we got a few. That link that Steve had was real. I have in my files a note from Steve thanking me for writing about Leo Feathers. He was one of those old rock and rollers, yeah. On the other hand, my friend Dave Barber, who was one of the acts on that two disc uh, explosive collection, told me the other day that at a time when his band was getting a lot of resistance from some of the older musicians, Steve made a point of coming out and seeing Dave's group and telling him, I don't know what it is you're doing, but I like it. Keep it up. Although I was able to visit with Steve several times afterward, I left the Tulsa world in 2006. A year after we inducted Steve into the Spot Music Hall of Fame. Right here on this very stage. The last story I did with him, he talked about his mother's death and a recent car wreck and how they both affected him. He talked about Tina and he talked about their life together. And he said, I think I'm playing better than I ever have. But there's a plan and a flow to it this time. It's not about being rich and famous as a musician. It's not about fighting my destiny as a musician. It's not what I thought it was about. In the final analysis, Steve's destiny was his music. And he finally knew it. I believe he also knew that what he created would be remembered and enjoyed even after he was gone. When Steve Pryor died, he left a Steve Pryor sized hole in our musical universe. And tonight, a lot of world class players from that universe have come together on this stage to confront that big hole and do their best to fill it up with the kind of music Steve played and loved. And in his honor, a lot more of it is about to come your way. Thank you. You know, it suddenly occurred to me, and I want to know how you feel about this, out front of the Canes Ballroom is the Tulsa Walk of Fame. Steve Pryor's name is not on that Walk of Fame, and I'd like to hear if you think he ought to be on there or not. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? You think Steve Pryor's name ought to be on the Tulsa Walk of Fame? Let me hear it. Yeah. Yeah, he does. You want to talk about a legacy. You ought to live the kind of life where you can have half this much love when you die. You know what I mean? Can you... Did, ladies and gentlemen, this is an amazing evening. Uh, Andrew Strong, the lead singer of The Commitments, who could not be here tonight, was a friend of Steve's, has a couple of words he wanted to say. We got the video queued up. Let's fire it up. Andrew Strong, lead singer of The Commitments. Um, if I could ask the Lord one thing, it would be like to be in Kane's Ball. I know you guys are going to have such a great night and celebrate Steve and his legacy. And I'm very honored to have known Steve and to have met Steve and all the other crew out there. Pride Hutchinson, Scott Hutchinson, and then we got Dale and the whole lot of you guys out there and all out there. I wish I could be there with you all. But Steve was just a phenomenal guitar player. I mean, it was just beyond words. It was like, oh man, his influence he's had on me, and still will always have, 
is just beyond words. You know, you speak to any, any, any of my, my friends here, anybody, it's just, that's the way it is. He was always the man. He'll always be the man. And I'm just deeply saddened by his passing. Yeah. It's just, I just don't know what, what more to say. I mean, it's like, he was a special soul. But hey, he's up there in heaven. He's walking with the best of the best of us. I love you. I love you all. And I want to give my condolences to Steve's family. Oh, I see you. Just, just have a great one and you celebrate for you. And we love you for the end of Ireland. Love you guys. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Hey, I think we've talked enough. It's time to wipe the tears out from underneath your eyes and do what this place is built to do.